those fire flickering lights. I love them. I know it's, it's cool, like, right? It's it's it feels very very warm and inviting and maybe we don't even flip it to the next scene maybe we just do the whole podcast like this well then why did i put my makeup on <laughs> you're right you're right why did i why do i have all these lights on me <laughs> so... i just i'm keeping you on your toes i'm just keeping you on your toes i know it's, it's the thing is where i'm going oh mm -hmm. yeah i gotta set up the green screen oh yeah i gotta put the lights up oh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it is the price worth paying to do this. Exactly. I, I'm just coming out of like two hours in the hair and makeup chair, and I am raring to go right now. I mean, just yeah, yeah. I'm very amped, very pumped for are this. Are you glamour puss? Are, I mean, stream. Are you ready for this? Are oh. you ready to see the two hours in a makeup chair? I hope you guys are ready. <laughs> Chat room. Let us know you're here. Give us a give us a hello. Yeah, Hi. announce yourselves, everybody, as you show up. We're gonna swap it over to the tavern here in a moment. Big oh, scary ducks God. here. Big scary duck is here, and and in our show notes, thank you for sending in your feedback for this episode. So awesome. All right, I'm here we go. Let's. The scene change. Scene change. Here we are. Scene change. Hi guys. And it's what magic. Is happening. It's so beautiful. It's, Feels it's, good. It's, it's so lovely. It is. Welcome. Oh, look at the kitty cat. There's cats here. The meow meows. Our lovely cat. There's one behind me here, even. I, I love it. It's you, you feel it. It's beautiful. There's one up here. The meow meows. Oh. Oh, it does move. Okay. <laughs> You're like, yeah, they all move. And I'm like, oh, okay. Of course they do. Of yeah, course they move. There's this. There's this. I'm looking at the stream itself just to see because I'm like, look at them. They're so cute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, now, Big Scary Duck says that I look great. But, you know, I mean, coffee sitting there after two hours in the hair and makeup chair. I, I can't compare with that. I, I, I mean, there, I'm just going to say there's a lot of product in this hair right now. Right. Let's just keep let's just yeah. put it that way. Fair. You don't roll out of bed looking like this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's for sure. You don't you don't roll out of the bed looking like this. It's no, I just, yeah. I literally rolled out of the bed. I feel terrible right now. That's the best thing. <laughs> That's the best thing about a bandana, right? Is that you don't have to sit in hair and makeup for two hours. You just throw on the bandana and you're just you're in it. That's it. Can I? All right. So that like this doesn't have a story that would go on the show, but so I can tell the story. Yeah. And not spoil anything. Um, okay. So the other day I was uh, not feeling it and I didn't really do my hair and I, I took a shower and everything, but my hair was an absolute disaster area. It was the one time that I was grateful that it is cold outside because I could just slap on my beanie, my like flappy beanie, fuzzy <laughs> hat, go out to the Trader Joe's and like talk up the, the, the guy behind the counter. To, he's like asking me about my Star Wars necklace and stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, my hair is atrocious but you can't see it so, <laughs> but you can't not, see that you don't you can't know see how atrocious it is because <laughs> it's all covered up <laughs> well played well played. yeah i mean that is the best part about and it and there's not a lot of the best parts about living in minnesota for the weather that we have in the winter but that is a good part i'm a little chilly and i could just put this on right and just be like you just be like yeah and just <laughs> it's chilly for southern california yeah, what is what is chilly for Southern California? Like sixty three degrees. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. I'm just checking my watch right now for my temperature currently outside. Uh, oh yeah. no. Twenty one. Twenty one. Twenty one. Wow. It's legal. It's, it's legal. <laughs> I think I would just freeze to death, to be honest with you. I don't know if I could work that. I have you ever been like, yeah you're from the, the west coast or the east coast you've been in cold weather i'm from i'm from the east coast i've been in la for five years or so now so it's the the yeah. body the body changes the body adapts i think yeah it was hard coming back from california after being there for a week in uh blizzcon i came home and it was cold and i was like oh i can't stand it i can't stand it then you kind of get used to it right yeah not too much but hey, chat room I heard when the temperature drops to 21, you just start drinking. 
Is that, it's is that just how, don't stop. Is that how it works? Don't stop. Don't stop. Get it some. Uh, chat room, how are our sound levels? Yes. Am I quiet? Am I, am I, am I, not, am, am, is coffee louder than me? What is, what is the sound of the, of the day? Are we sounding okay? Yeah, what's the balance I'm like? Yeah, you know, I'm going to check my balance too, because I'll be recording on this one. You sound good, says Big Scary Duck. Okay. Good. Uh, there's no like real like weirdness in there. Sounds All right, good. I am going to start my recording right now. Okay. Because then I've got the local sound, and I'm going to test this. Remember, uh, did did you adjust the uh, this podcast? I was I was going to say, did Sorry? you adjust did you adjust that from last time, or that's what we're testing right now? Yeah, testing. Oh no no no. Oh yes, I did. I moved the so this is how quiet the ending now is. Okay okay. If it will play. Oh no. I did that bad. Hold on. That's how quiet it is now. And it's a lot better for me to talk over and for you to talk over. Yeah, that's nice. Yes. Yeah, that's good. Go away. <laughs> Go away, music. We don't want you right now. <laughs> I mean, I just hear that music and I just, I want to curl up. I want to curl up and just. You're already curled up. Look I'm at you. I'm feeling quite so comfy. Cute. I'm feeling You're quite so comfy. cozy. We're, we're going to make it cozy because it is the end of November. It is almost, it almost December, almost holiday. Well, it is holiday season, but it's holiday time. And uh, yeah, you guys think we sound good, so I think I think we're in good shape. Yeah, I think we should do it. Uh, chat room. You know, oh, you know what I can do with my sword. Let's see what I can do here. How about this? This is what I do for most of my shows when I'm streaming. Is uh, it is? Are you ready, chat room? Oh my God, the ready check. Warak is here. What's up, Warak? How are you? Hi, Warak. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. The ready check is good. I like that a lot. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then the tradition that I have in my in my uh, chats is that you press one if you're ready, and those who want to be uh, different, they press two, or they're asking for potions, or you know that kind of thing. But since we are in the Goldshire Tavern, that yeah. is pretty appropriate. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I like it. Maybe they need like uh maybe they need a feast or something. Yeah, sometimes they ask for yeah, them. They need the we feast. don't ever give it to them cuz we're like, "Hey, we're ready." Yeah. Are you ready? No. Harp Chan right, is here. What's up, Harp Chan? How are you? Harp Chan. Welcome. Metal Magic. Hi, hi. Metal Magic says oh. it all makes sense. He's like a potion, please. It's like mind blown. <laughs> Butts are most suitable for the Goldshire Tavern, and just so happens, we both have a butt. But we have that in common, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> she speaks the truth. This woman knows. I don't even know where that came from. <laughs> I mean, you're right. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not wrong. That's the thing, is when you're right, you're right. And you're when right. You're right. <laughs> butts. Yeah. Coffee has two this... butts, I'm told. Uh-oh. Really? Who said that? Yeah, who did? Where did that come from? Rude. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever said it. Rude. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, let's do the ready check chat room. You let us know if you're ready with ones or twos. <laughs> It's crazy. I've already prefaced the two. <laughs> it gets to fit. One one. Fluffy's here with butts. Fluffy's here with butts. Harp Chan's here with butts. butts. Little magic is ready. <laughs> sort of. You guys are ready. I love it. I love it. Coffee, are you ready for this? You need a one. little extra beer? <laughs> Put a one up. One. I can't do it around my microphone. <laughs> my microphone's in the way, but that's that's okay. That's okay. All right. I don't don't mess up your sound. You're you know what? You this week we're getting my sound system set up. I can't wait. I'm so excited. It it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be game 
changing. Game changing. There's a Skeletor emote? Who has this? Oh, that's awesome. <gasps> he's got his potion. That's awesome. <laughs> but he's got a Skeletor emote. That is the best thing ever. Nice. I mean, we know. We know my my obsession with She-Ra already because we talked there. We've been open about, about it. it. We've talked about it. Yeah, yeah. We We've have. been honest with each other. Right? <laughs> We're gonna get open about a lot of stuff. I think on our time together on this show. I think so too. So it's just gonna be it's just gonna be the way of the world. You're getting stream choppiness. Oh, mm. that is not good. We don't want that. I can see what else I can. I'm watching a video just to, for a moment, just to see if I see anything. I would like a beer too. I have one. This is new. This is fantastic. Sounds amazing. Let me reload this. What is giving me fits here? Okay, of course. The only thing I could do that might help, honestly, is not share my screen with you but then you wouldn't be able to like react off me that's fine i can do it without it it's you know it's not the end of the world it's not as I fun though it. no it's not as fun but it's doable if it's if it's taxing the stream well uh, let me make sure that's the last avenue here i'm gonna kill some stuff in here too kill this and we're gonna kill What else can we kill make here? Slack go away. Yep. Mm -hmm. Caught the bug from you now. <laughs> Dude, I was on her computer earlier trying to help her out. Did you figure it out? I think we got something going on. Um, yeah. Yeah. How are we looking now? All right. So the thing is, is that. see any dropped frames actually yeah, if it's it looked like i had some dropped frames it looks better now what do what do you guys okay. say chat what how do you feel about see, the frames what do you say it is looking <clears throat> looking better and it could just be i mean the last thing i'm gonna do i guess is just not share my screen with you but i think we can do it without that yeah, I think I think it looks pretty good on my end from looking at the. Okay. If there's if it's a lot of extra gifts that are, uh, I do see some stutters. It might be the extra gifts you've got rotating in there. It could be. There's a lot of cats going on here. Which cat do we have? Right behind me. Which cat is this? No, not that cat. That's the cat. Move him. He's gone. Okay. Okay. Well, that is a lot of. A lot of stuff moving around in there. Hmm. I mean, honestly, uh, it just kind of looks like it might be Twitch. Like, I haven't dropped any more frames on the on okay. OBS, but it looks like Twitch is kind of right now. Guys, is it looking good? Chat room, speak up. Forever hold your peace. As I reload the Twitch page. As you reload the Twitch page. Oh, eggnog. Eggnog's not very good right now. Eggnog, eh? Sounds like eggnog. What else can I kill? Yeah, I'm seeing some stutter on the stream, too. I... Let's see. I wonder. Let's get it. Let's kill that. Oh, my gosh. Is that it? Let me see. Not as bad as it was. Okay. I'm also talking a little quiet too. Yeah, Harpshan says quiet. Um, let me just kill absolutely everything other than what we're okay. doing here. Okay. If I, if I have to not share the screen for this one, maybe we just don't do it. But let's... that's fine. No worries. I have done that many times. So do not worry. <clears throat> You'll be able to see me. So.
Bill, I'm watching the stream right now, and it does look a little, it definitely has some stutter. Yeah. I'm looking at, I'm just, I'm just double checking, I'm, I'm looking at it right now. Okay. Feel like <laughs> the fitting with the safe topic. Feel like it looks okay. Topic. Yeah, it looks like it's doing well now. Oh, the little kitty on the on the right is doing well. Every once in a while, it just like catches up to itself. It's really weird. You guys should do and say a bunch of stuff. I, I'm watching the little kitty on the on the side. He's just he's doing good. Okay. Looking Move good. around and fast. <laughs> Do a little just dance on stream. Oh, I feel like it's okay. Yeah, I think we're good. I think we good, fam. Whatever it was that was bogging down the computer. But I do need to open up the spreadsheet again. Okay. That that was uh. That might be it. Now that I think about it. Let's see. Google Docs. It usually doesn't do that much, but we'll see. We're gonna check it out right now. Okay. Technology. Technology. It's the thing. The Let's little judge here. of the little striped kitty underneath the sign is the is the one. He's That's the, one. the judge. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because if he stays in a good smooth movement. Right. Then we're in good shape. That makes sense. Okay. He's still looking good. He's still looking good. He's I'm loading up the uh loading up the spreadsheet. It's All right. doing things. So it stays good with the spreadsheet open, I think we're fine, but I don't know. Okay. How are we? If Still it, looking good. Okay. Spreadsheet's open. Everything's open. I need to do this thing. So if we if we get through this, we're good. We're good. We can do it. <laughs> we have the technology. Do it we have it, working. though? Do we have we the do. technology? We do. All right. Okay. We're talking to the internet right now. This what? Is the, we're talking. Yes. Who let these guys in here? I know. I thought this was private time. We're in good shape. You. Kitty is moving out just fine. He's okay. doing great. All right. All right. Are you ready for this? Yes. All sounds are off. All sounds are off. No yes. notifications. And we have recording going on right now. I need to verify that on my side just real quick. Yes. Recording is going on. Recording is on there. We are ready to go. All right. Um, before we get here. started, if anyone um, is just tuning in, uh, first of all, thank you guys so, so much. You guys are awesome uh, for ch for checking this out and tuning in for this. The other part of this is, is like as we're recording the podcast, we try not to interrupt um, the show with much uh, audience interaction or chat. So if you're talking in chat, we may not necessarily be able to reply to you. Um, and then if you're, if you're following or subscribing or any of that awesome, incredible stuff, we also probably won't be able to um, acknowledge that until after the recording. And if you guys don't mind, if you could let others know that as well as they join, because I know some people will join during the middle. I would really appreciate that. Yeah, I know. We don't want anybody feeling bad that they subbed and didn't get an acknowledgement or they rated right. or hosted. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. But since it is a recording of the show, um, we do that first, and then we thank everybody at the end. Yes, we'll and we will, and we will just talk to you all. at the end. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he can see it all. So. Yes. All right. Are you so. ready? Yes. Uh, let's roll it. Let's do this. Uh, episode two. 
wow of the jewels and coffee hour beginning in three two one you're listening to the jewels and coffee hour sharing the stories of blizzard gamers around the world pull up a chair we're glad you're here Welcome to episode two of the Jules and Coffee Hour. I'm Jules. And I'm Coffee. And my God, is it bright in here? Is it just me? I think it is just so bright that you have to wear shades. Oh, okay. <laughs> it might be that burning <laughs> fire right there behind me. I don't know. <laughs> Are you feeling warm? Because, I mean, this Let me is take a these little off. opposite day. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah. A little bit of opposite. You're by the fire. I'm the one in Minnesota. This seems a little off to me. How are you making out? Are you okay? Are, are you going to make it? I will make it. I will make it. I, I, I will require lots of fuzzy blankets and layers. Lots of layers. Okay, because my, my body starts to not function at 21 degrees, which my understanding is the temperature there right now. Oh, by the way, it is 20 degrees now. It's going so, down? It's what? going down. <laughs> what is this world we live in? Oh, my gosh. Oof. Welcome to the world that I live in. <laughs> We're here to talk about the world that we live in and the one that you live in. And we are so happy to be back. First of all, thank you guys so much for your response to episode one, your feedback, your comments and compliments. Like, we... I've been out and about in the community and people have been messaging me and being like, I love the show. It's great. And I'm just like, thank you. So it's been amazing. <laughs> it's been amazing. There's been the, the DMs and Discord and, and people have messaged me on Twitter and then they just reached out to me through Twitch chat and just, I can't thank you guys enough. This is this was just some wild idea that Jules and I had, um, you know, championed by Workhorse and, and we didn't know where we were going to go with it and it just feels like it, we're really starting to nail down the direction here and we are having so much fun i can't even begin to tell you how much fun we're having so just thank you so much absolutely and so if this is your first time tuning in this show is about you our heroes hearth and blizzard community coffee and i are here to tell stories and talk about the things going on in our community of blizzard gamers and it can be anything it can be about Blizzard, it can be about our lives. And this time we're bringing it around to our lives and we're talking to something about something that is pretty important. And that's technology, how it changed our lives and how maybe we're a little nostalgic for the things that we used to have before technology came in. I'll get into all of that in a minute, but uh, chat room, be prepared because you are a big part of this as well. As we start talking about our stories, you are welcomed and encouraged to add yours and we may bring them into the conversation you never know which is pretty cool so coffee before we get to that though i want to take a little bit of a quick revisit to our last week's episode topic about diablo immortal because okay i don't know about you but after we got done with the show like people were messaging me like days afterwards like sharing their stories about diablo immortal yeah yeah and and i think that i think that means that we did a decent job of just kind of getting the conversation started, which I hope is mm -hmm. the, you know, the goal of all of these episodes is we just, we begin that conversation. We're not necessarily going to get to any point where we're, we're, we look at each other and we're just like the end Jules. I hope that these conversations no. continue and, and last a long time. So it, it means a lot to us that you guys are reaching out after the episode and, and telling us what you thought and, and giving your opinions. Yes. And I was, I was sitting, I don't even know, I think it was your Twitch stream, and okay. somebody messaged me and was like, how was the podcast? And I, I don't want to call them out or anything, because they were okay. just like, I did not like Diablo Immortal at all, and it bothered me. And I was like, oh, I... Yikes. Oh. <laughs> so, but it got, it, like, we were, it, it, it got people talking, and I. this is what I love, is that you guys feel comfortable enough to talk to us about it and you're bringing up the conversation with other people and um so definitely say do that more like you can send us messages and dms and yeah. we can't always get to them all but we certainly do read them and <laughs> and try to respond to what we can even even uh, the ones that we don't necessarily make it to on the show are, are things that are going to better inform where we take the show in episodes to come so just really all the feedback uh, all the the messages they, they do matter 
They really do. Yeah. We did get one letter that I would like to read, and this oh, is in direct do. response to that first episode, and it goes like this. It said, congratulations on your new show. I enjoyed your conversation about the community's reaction to Diablo Immortal. I was disappointed with the announcement at BlizzCon, and I still am. I didn't boo at the con because I'm not an asshole. <laughs> Here's my experience. I showed up at the con salivating for Diablo info, even though I knew there wasn't going to be a D4 announcement. I went out on Halloween in Anaheim as a witch doctor. The <laughs> moment came, and my heart sank. I suppose I was hoping for another necromancer-type patch. Man, it was crazy how bad I felt. Cool. I played the game. It was fun, really fun even. I'll certainly download it, but I won't play it beca much because of battery drain and being underground on the subway without Wi-Fi. Also, I'm a PC gamer, and that's where my tribe is. Your disappointment, Jules, over the new She-Ra franchise is understandable. <laughs> you have a real nostalgia for it, and it's demonstrably changed. It's a non-sexualized girl power story of someone who doesn't play second fiddle to her male counterpart slash sarcasm. She-Ra wasn't made for you. Diablo More Mortal wasn't made for me. The difference is you didn't spend thousands of dollars to go to a con about 80s cartoons. I love you, Jules. Coffee, I don't know you, but you seem cool. <laughs> oh, this guy's cool. <laughs> this guy is cool. <laughs> Actually, it's a female. Sal is, oh. uh, is someone I know really well. Um, <clears throat> she's great. She's fantastic, but I love her. <laughs> Sal. Sal, you're cool. Sal, you're, she's, she's cool. She is cool. She, she is cool. And that point about Chira not being made for me was something where I was just like, yep, that is. And a couple of people said that outside of the conversation that we had, that Diablo yeah. Immortal wasn't made for me and I'm okay with that. And I was like, mm, I like that. Yeah. I mean, it's and that just kind of touches on. I loved that you asked me about Star Wars because, you know, that's a key topic for me. And um, it's just you got to respect that something may not necessarily be made for you, but yeah, I think Sal brought it home and, and, you know, while I know that some of the new star Wars films are not made for me, I didn't invest thousands of dollars um, to go to a convention to see them, you know? So yeah. yeah. Sal is Sal yeah. speaking truth. Sal speaking truth. She is. She is. And so I definitely wanted to read that letter. And if you guys are, interested in sending us feedback about the show after it's recorded that's exactly what you can do and you may hear it re being read on the show yeah like that don't be surprised I will. <laughs> that's my name you said my name yeah. um so speaking of saying names we've got a couple of great names in our feedback se section about the lovely topic at hand so uh let's get into the topic of the week shall we Did sure I get to do that now? let's right. do it it's time for the topic of the week. Yes, it is. So it's the holidays, if you hadn't known. Uh, and this week's topic came to me as I was thinking about holiday shopping, of all things. When I was little, I used to sit in the corner of my living room, of my, my childhood home, and it was always like the same corner behind my dad's uh, his recliner. Like that. There was that spot that I had to do this every year. And I would pull out that massive Sears catalog and I would plunk it into my little lap and I would page through the back of the Sears catalog because it was all the toys. Mm -hmm. It was all the toys. And I would go through that. I would scour it to make my holiday. <laughs> and like I thought about this as I was doing, you know, thinking about holiday shopping. And I'm like, man, that's something that you don't do anymore because everything's yeah. online. And I love that fact. But it, this is where the topic came from. Now, we will also to put in the disclaimer that there is about a, what is it, a 14-year time? We have a 14-year age difference between the two of us. I know, ouch. Because um, <laughs> you just turned 30. There's a, diff there's a different, though. 44. Like, <laughs> but, and that's the thing about, I think this is a universal enough topic, though, that you and I can yes. relate on some things. So I think we're still going to get the desired effect. That we're working towards yes here. Oh, we will for sure but when like when we're talking about the differences in technology and how it affected our lives there yes. is, i have 14 years advanced expanded knowledge yeah <laughs> so, so yes it, it is a good thing to, to clarify i don't like make a big deal about my age but in this situation it mm -hmm. probably makes good sense so you saw okay. a president that i never saw right that's true i did yeah <laughs> 
So. Oh, goodness. Yes. And so that is, that's kind of where this topic came from. So let's start you off with this. When you think about how technology has shaped your life, where do you automatically go? Whew. Uh, my, I think my general reaction to that is just the way we communicate with one another. Mm -hmm. That's that yeah. that's right where my head goes. Um, in a in a a time of Discord and Google Hangouts, I just um, remember a time when those things didn't exist, and you yeah. didn't have a cell phone even necessarily to text message someone. You had a landline phone, and if you wanted to talk to somebody. You call them on the phone and you couldn't call two people at one time. If, if, you know, mom was talking to grandma, I couldn't call my friend TJ and God, that created some issues and some fights, yes. but, yes. but, um, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's, it's so interesting to see like the way we communicate with one another has sort of evolved with how we game. I, at least that's my experience because when I first started gaming, it was all about, um, team speak and ventrilo and then we moved over to skype and then it went became hangouts and then discord and there always this, there seems to be some type of trend as we go um about our our gaming careers we we always adapt with a new uh, social technology to communicate yeah. while we go through the games and now our games have that built in so it's something that gaming publishers and developers are um you know considering and taking very seriously so that's just where my Remember head kind of wow goes. Remember voice chat? Remember uh, the, the iteration of wow voice chat? <laughs> yikes. <laughs> that was... <laughs> we don't talk about that. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's so It's funny that you went... You, so you said TeamSpeak, Ventrilo. Yeah. Skype. Yep. Then I think, I, then, then I, think I used Hangouts for the longest hangouts, time. Hangouts. And then you went to Discord. Yes. I think that was so the order. For me, it was Ventrilo Mumble. Oh, Mumble. Uh, you know what? I yeah. stand corrected. Mumble was in there, I think, between Ventrilo and TeamSpeak. I'm fairly certain yeah. for me. It was Vent, Mumble, and then it went from Mumble to straight to Discord. But I'd mm -hmm. been using Skype for podcasting and communicating with my family and that kind of thing. But it's funny how that, how when you went through there. I've yeah. never touched TeamSpeak in my life, no. to be honest. No, but... It's always been there. The other curious um, thing about that, though, is how you know we're using this great platform, Discord, which is free. And when we used to do this, someone had to pay for a Ventrilo server, you know, yeah. to to host this. So it's just wild. It's been it's been kind of a wild and crazy ride. And and some and you can take it for granted, but when you, you think about it, that's how we communicate with you know one another. And you know, so yes. much of so much of our history we associate with the games we played and the relationships we made. But could we have made those relationships in the games without a method of communication? You know, mm -hmm. it's it's That's just, a very good point. It's a it's a it's a curious thing. And then and then of course now when I think back at it, I kind of get a little nostalgic because I miss being able to not text somebody or message somebody. And it was actually a really personable thing to speak with someone on the phone. Um, it, yeah. it, it meant a lot to call a family member, a friend, and that was just a really, really personal thing. And I think that, w and I think that we've lost touch of how special that was a little bit. Yes, and I, I this is something that I, that I wanted to mention in terms of the nostalgia part, which you just brought me right into, which is. Do you call anybody nowadays without announcing that you're going to call them first? I, you know, I do, but I, it's not, it's, it's just my parents, probably. It's yeah. only my parents yeah. or my wife right. are the only people. Just, because now I, and it's something that I've, I've noticed that we have just become part of our etiquette is yeah. that even my parents will message me and say, do you have time to Skype? And, yeah. and well, rarely, like, you know, like this weekend I was out going for a walk. Um, it was actually 45 degrees outside and I could actually go outside for a little bit. Oh, so and, you were outside? Um, it was 45 degrees and you were walking was, around out there? Yeah. Yeah, because it's been below 32 for the last, since we got okay. back from BlizzCon. Well, we're lucky to have you with us right now. That is <laughs> not an acceptable temperature anywhere it's in the not, world. It's not, but I did it anyway. And my dad calls me as I'm on my walk and... um. 
and you know just kind of popped into because i had i had my pokemon go out i was outside catching pokemon <laughs> and uh and and it's like oh my dad's calling and it just again because i was thinking about this show topic mm -hmm. is the thing about the unexpectedness of getting a phone call that you don't know is coming anymore like that doesn't happen as much yeah it's yeah so it's like and, uh, it's, it's like what i'm getting a phone call who is this yeah. yeah, or that you get a phone call of a number that you do not know, and I am like introvert city going, I ain't touching that. <laughs> I don't yep. want to do that. <laughs> I, I, I do not answer the phone if I see a number that I don't know. And I, you yes. know, and I, I will, I'm like, if it's important, they'll leave a voicemail and I'll check the voicemail later on. Right. But yes. if it's a number I don't yes. know, I'm just thinking to myself, this is somebody trying to sell something or some kind of like, you know, uh, you know, mistaken unknown number I, I just my mind jumps around to different things there's no way it could actually be an important person calling me from a number i don't know yes yes and that is probably the best part of that whole technology becoming a part of our lives because i used to have severe phone anxiety people would tell me i had to like when i was young my mom used to tell me like call your aunt and tell her that we're on the way over and it would make me panic because i did not like I had a real problem with not knowing what to say. Like, yeah. how do I? Hi, Aunt Linda. Um, it's Jules. And then, do you know who it is? Like, I, I had all the that anxiety. Now I don't have to. Like, if it were the same situation now, all I'd have to do is text Aunt Linda, and it would be super easy and less anxiety ridden, which is a huge benefit of like, hello, I, introvert. <laughs> I'm kind of the I'm the same exact way, and that happens to me now because my dad is from a generation my dad is my dad's 70 years old okay. so so yeah my dad's 71 okay so he's from a generation where that that's a special thing and he may not necessarily have the capabilities to stay in contact through other means through text message or something yeah. but yeah he I, I know that every time and so i call him and it's a special thing that i, I will talk to him on the phone um but when he Ask me to call someone like a relative, you know, call your, call your aunt or call your uncle or something like that. It's always gives me yeah. severe anxiety. And I don't, I can't, I don't know I, why I can't figure it out. I have the out. same thing. And it's mainly just because it's the, for me, it was always the awkwardness of knowing what to say and how to say it and how to introduce yourself and yeah. carrying on a conversation with someone who's kind of like your, uh, your it's your elder because it, yeah. it's like uh it, i've always had that i've it, i've gotten better with it with like business phone calls and that kind of thing because you could basically like i'll have just like word vomit well i'd be like hi this is jewel scott calling <laughs> and then it just kind of comes out and, and they're like who are you oh, yeah. i want whatever you're selling give me some of that jewel <laughs> scott action right now can i have that right there <laughs> give it to me <laughs> But but so, to your to your phone point, anxiety. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, it's a real thing. I feel it all the time. Um, but then, but then you think about, at least for me personally in my life, um, when I was growing up, I didn't really talk to anybody on the phone aside from relatives or family anyway. Okay. Um, so that's always been a thing. And then when, um, I think when a lot of kids were getting their for cell phones and things like that, um, I what my parents were against the cell phone thing, and I also was um, in kind of a weird social situation. So um, I grew up in Baltimore, and in Baltimore, when I was going to public school, I was actually I I, I had a weird social upbringing because I was a, I was a minority going to school yeah. in Baltimore. Right. Um, so I wasn't really good at making friends, and I was kind of being bullied and that sort of thing. And then I would come home and then I would find my friends online in the game mm -hmm. and it would be right. on Ventrilo and stuff like that. So for that to evolve and then for me to think back and actually miss the phone and the phone calls a little bit, it's, it's interesting because it's, it's like, it's very self-reflective. It's n never once did I think then, you know, hopping into Ventrilo every night that I would miss like talking on the phone a little bit with, family yeah so you know and that i love that you brought that whole thing up because and this is where our age difference will come in handy for this conversation is so when i was in school i was bullied too um because i was a smart kid 
and I was definitely not the one that would fit in with everybody. And so, and I was just different. I was always different. So I was bullied a lot or I was ignored. And so I didn't have a lot of friends. And then I went to college and college was kind of the same way. But right as I hit my sophomore year of college is when the internet just started to come into fruition and the IRC chats began. You know, so having those IRC chats and yeah. chat rooms between different colleges, being able to connect with people. If I had the opportunity like you had when you were in high school to connect with people on the Internet in a way that would allow me to make friends the way I do now, mm -hmm. I wonder what it would have been like for me growing up because it took me. Gosh, I mean, it took me probably until my 30s to really feel comfortable in my own skin about who I was and the fact that I was different or you know, not as I mean, I'm kind of a tomboy ish. Like I don't wear dresses as a girl and I, you know, I don't know. I'm just different. Mm -hmm. And, but that's, but I've learned how to make it my own and to be, you know, to turn it into a career basically. <laughs> but, and was that, was happened. that a result of you talking with other people in IRC? Yeah. Chat? I, I mean, mean absolutely because I was able in that in those IRC chats I was able to be myself and people would accept me for who I was and I started making friends and I started connecting with people from like Seattle and Wisconsin and I was in New Jersey at the time and there were people from all over the country that I was talking to and it was like this incredible experience that I had never because we were only talking between different colleges at the time so we were right. all college students we're all the same age yeah it was so fun and um it got to be almost addictive for me after a while i would spend more time in the computer lab because we didn't have our own computers in our rooms at the time right um more time in the computer lab than i would studying luckily i kept my grades up but it was that like addictive level of being able to just be hungry for people to connect with you on a level that is real yeah it's so and and i would not have had that you know, I didn't have that in high school because all we had was, you know, if you're lucky and your parents put three-way calling on your phone, you might be able to talk to two <laughs> friends at the same time. <laughs> I mean, that's if sort of lucky. like, and, um, you know, just to cross age boundaries, but that's, it, you're going through a similar thing just like later, I guess, in your life yeah. than I was. For going through the same thing, maybe just you're just later because technology was changing at the same time. So I feel like yes. technology it doesn't matter how old you are; it's having a similar effect, uh, a similar effect on people, regardless of their age, just because of what it's doing to our culture at that time. Yes. Um, I remember, you know, I, I we couldn't afford a computer, um, you know, so I was, my parents would take me to the library, and the library was where you got on a computer, and that's where they had American Online, and you get the. <laughs> And you'd wait, you know, 10 minutes for that to work out. Um, yep. boing, boing. But then, then you'd get online and then you could talk to people. And um, there's something that happens when there's an anonymity to it where there's a screen in front of you that I had never had before in my life. And that's part of yeah. part of what helped me learn to be myself is having that, yeah. um, that anonymity behind the screen. You get onto AOL Instant Messenger and you could be your best self because this person wasn't in front of you directly in front of you having a conversation so it's just interesting see, to think you about. know that's amazing to me because you say it made you be your best self and when i first got that power of being able to do that i became someone else hmm. for a time i became someone else i basically just like role played a person that i wanted to be oh wow. and i wasn't um and it was a very it was an interesting time for me because it, it made when when you kind of realize like, okay, when the lines cross between kind of the fantasy of being that person and then like the reality of like, hey, can we meet each other? And I'm like, oh shit. Yikes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is not me. Yeah. <laughs> and so you, you understand the um, the power and the, and the draw that comes in from people, you know, kind of harnessing the anonymity of the internet. And like these days now, I don't even think about doing that because it's just, you know, it is so much easier just for me to be myself, but mm -hmm. when you don't get the chance to do that for a long time. That was the early days of right. the getting on the internet and AOL and, and all of that kind of thing. So I would have said probably I was like 25, 20, 21 to 25 is where that kind of period of time happened. Yep. Um, 
yeah, it's just so it's so amazing to me now, though, because of the internet and because of technology as a whole and having the connections that we do it turned into a career for me and it made me find the, the true thing I wanted to be doing for the rest of my life um, and even when my life like last couple years or so my life completely changed um, in like divorce um, moving to another state um, new job kind of like first time single in like you know x number of years a long yeah. time and yet i never felt alone ever because i had my internet friends i had these amazing people like if i needed my parents i could get them on skype and i could be there to talk to them face to face i mean it's not the same as being in person yeah right? but yeah like the technology that we have right now has almost completely changed me and my life for the better and it's just it i i, I will I, I will always marvel about it like i will i just did it last week when we were doing the show and i'm like you know we just pressed a button and we're now talking to people like around yeah. the world right now it's pretty, like, i was and i was like what that can't be that can't be right <laughs> that's impossible <laughs> but it's it's interesting to me that you say that um you know you were going through all those challenging times in your life and you never mm -hmm. felt alone and I think part of why that is, is is because you are so talented in your art that you do in, in your podcasting and, and your content creation. And I would argue the fact that can you be your, uh, you know, your most talented, your most um, expressive self if you don't know who you are to begin with? I mean, I think part of becoming a talent or a great artist, uh, whether, you know, you're an actor, singer, content creator, personality, host, whatever it is, is really finding out who you are and being grounded and comfortable in whoever that is so i think yes and yeah absolutely was, but you know what work in progress always always like yep like completely and even like so the the person that you see sitting in front of you right now doing this podcast is not the are same person who's here yeah i'm right there what are you doing um <laughs> or this way is it this way <laughs> this way hi <laughs> the overlay is making us have like opposite day <laughs> turning around in there um the the lovely part about doing this kind of work is that it it changes you in a way that you don't even know it's coming mm -hmm. but it's like the person that started doing podcasting 60 and a half years ago is not the person that i am today and i'm hopeful that I'm not going to be this, I'm going to be better, a better iteration of me in six years, you know, six years from now again, yeah. but it's that's, there because, because I'm able to connect with people. That's what I always say. You know, people ask you, where do you want to be in five years? I think you asked me that at some point yeah, in I our did. podcast and, you know, I had plans and I create roadmaps and timelines and stuff, but I think my basic answer was just like, I want to be a better version of who I am right now, you know? So yeah. I, yeah. I think that's universal. I think that's. A good way to think that means you have a good yeah good head on your shoulders and a good uh, idea of who you are so that's pretty cool well let me give you some compliments sir because you are stretching yourself quite a bit by doing this kind of work and in, in the podcasting and uh and learning well. how to create in a different way which is a challenge it's not easy to take yourself outside your comfort zone in a, in a, and, and to be in front of a bunch of people while you do it. Right. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot that goes on when you, when you do that, I know we're digress, digressing from the topic, but I think it's a good thing to say is that, but I love it when we do there, this, by the way, I know we, we could like, we just go up, we could just go. talk. Yeah. We'll be the jewels and coffee, like 72 hours. And you guys would just be here like, Oh, we're going to get a meme saying, well, it's actually the Jules and Coffee 2 in a plus hours. <laughs> <laughs> Jules and Coffee 3, 4. I know. There is, but that's the thing that is challenging yourself it is something that I, I mean, I, I encourage every single person listening to this show right now to think of ways that you can challenge yourself in, in, in look at things from a different angle because 
we have <laughs> we have the technology. <laughs> you say we do. I'm so, not so certain we do, but I'm I'm I believe it. Wait, wait. Okay, bring it. No, I want to hear that. Tell me more about that. I mean, we it. have the technology, but it you know the stream started to stutter and lag, and the cat wasn't moving, and just every time we every time we dive deeper in a technology, we become more reliant on it, and then when it doesn't work, what do yeah. we do? Yeah. Okay, so let's 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 switch that gear a little bit. It's a great transition to maybe some of the stuff that you're nostalgic for mm -hmm. that doesn't happen anymore because of technology. Mm -hmm. I mean, the 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 main thing I, I can think of are those special moments that you would have on the phone. I I felt even though I'm more connected with my family than I ever have been with you know direct messaging and you know social media and things like that by social media by the way we didn't talk about that but holy crap what a different world oh gosh social media. yeah no kidding <laughs> but is it are we still having that meaningful connection you know uh, is it is it meaningful is like the hitting a like button the same thing as picking up the phone and talking about a certain topic with somebody you know and then how much of our actual phone conversations become um did you did you see that thing I posted on Facebook the other day? Wasn't that sick? Yeah, I I really liked it. I, I liked it, and then I commented it was awesome. Oh yeah, I saw that comment. That reminded me of that thing you posted on Facebook last week. Yeah, that was pretty cool. And and then your phone conversations become about what you posted on social media, and then suddenly yeah. you're there's a lack of any meaningful conversation, and and that sort of thing just I miss I miss calling somebody on the phone and just having a conversation that you remember um, even even more than almost like a, a photo or, or an image yeah. you know like that conversation is so ingrained in your head that you'll remember that conversation more so than um, an actual thing that happened in front of you because some, I don't know, something about tone of voice and people communicating is so impactful to me and I don't get that yes. anymore for the most part and it's a struggle when you are trying to interpret someone's meaning or tone through text words and it can um, cause issues it can cause issues yeah, sometimes absolutely. yeah and and more issues than sometimes it's worth um but it's funny because i mean i'm going to i'm going to go out on a limb here i mean i might i might be way off base coffee but i think you might be an extrovert i don't know i, I mean might be. i i i don't know my wife well, okay, says I am. Yeah, like okay, so the ba the basic, and the reason I'm going here, there is a reason I'm going here. Okay. Um, the basic definition of ext introvert versus extrovert, and the very basic terms, like, do you get energized because you are around people, or do you have to retreat to gain your energy back? Oof, it's that's a tough thing. I think that when I am at, put in those situations around other people, I think I do rise to the occasion and get the energy, um, you know, while I'm there. But after yep. the after that um, event or, or, or opportunity, I get very kind of internal and I kind of okay. suck it all in and gear up for that next thing. So you're an introverted extrovert. Yep. Okay. So that makes a lot of sense to me for the conversation because I'm listening to you talk about the phone mm -hmm. conversation thing. And I don't remember a time where I've had like a long phone conversation beyond like being a teenager where you're talking about a bunch of bullshit mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that you've had, like that I haven't had a long phone conversation where I didn't feel like, oh my gosh, I just need to now. <sighs> yeah. Like, I, I can't do it. I don't have the ability, but I could sit in front of discord or whatever messaging program for hours and talk yeah. to you or i could sit on a podcast like this and hours and talk to you yes that is doable for me but like a phone call i mean thing, that's that's I an interesting don't have point that nostalgia. that's an interesting point because they're they're friends i mean honestly probably my closest my only friends that i've had any you know meaningful and granted these are I say this now. This is before I started streaming. Through streaming, I've yeah. met people that I hold so dear and close to my heart. I plan on being friends with them for years and years to come. Before streaming, I had friends that I've known going on 20 plus years. And the only way that we've maintained that type of relationship is through video games and Discord and things like that. And as I could sit in front of a computer in Discord with these people, 
for hours and hours and not know that any time has gone by and not feel um, any sort of stress or anxiety about what I'm saying or what I'm conveying to those people. Um, if I don't, I don't know that I could call them on the phone. That's just not part of our relationship is. Okay. I never call these people on the phone and I think they feel the same way towards me because they never call <laughs> me. So, but then, but then if someone asked them, uh, do you know coffee? Are you, are you close with coffee? They, I think that they would like me say, Oh yeah, I'm really close with him. He's one of my best friends. I've known him for tw almost 20 years. They wouldn't say, yeah, coffee's some dude I met on the internet. I don't think they would yeah. say that, you know? Well, they, you know, maybe like after five minutes of meeting you, but then after that, I'd be like, did you know how we met? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> which is, which is I, I have a friend like that who I met in World of Warcraft ten, 12 years ago now. And we are still, like, we met each other nine years after we had been friends. Okay. And it was literally like, it was actually really, really crazy nerve wracking to meet each other, even though we'd been friends for so long and known each other for so long. But about five minutes after that, we were like hanging out. I'm like, yeah, this is, this is great. Like, <laughs> this, is, this is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's exactly what it. That's exactly the chat it. room is buttering you up to get compliments, by the way. So you just be prepared when we're done. You're going to be, you're going to be giving them lots of love. <laughs> uh I chat got nothing room is but love for chair, chat. By the way, got nothing they, for love for chat. Third chair. Um, here's what I'm nostalgic about okay. that technology has affected. Go to a concert, a sporting event, a big deal like BlizzCon. Everybody's got their phone up. And Oof, gosh. And I do not like this at all. I do not. I, 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 because I feel like technology has sometimes taken us into a place where we don't experience the moment. We try to capture the moment versus actually living in it. Um, back in uh, October, I went to see Phil Collins. Yes, I am showing my age again. Um, but I went to see Phil Collins, who is my absolute all-time favorite artist in the world. And he comes from me as a child. Um, you know loving that music in the you know from as a kid and so i went to see this concert which i was so excited about and it was so nice because most of the people there were my parents age <laughs> yeah. so there wasn't a whole lot of the phone or heaven forbid an ipad being held up to the rafters. that is the worst take... oh. i hate i hate it anyway right and i, I believe m most of it goes back to social media because if you didn't have yeah. a video or a picture there did it actually happen right on social media but then you you see people with the cell phones and then all of a sudden this guy in the very front holds up the the 11 inch ipad pro and you're just like sweetheart we're trying to watch the concert honey what are you doing right <laughs> so and, <laughs> and that's the thing is like are you going to watch that video other than share it on social media that is the thing that bugs me the most about it because i feel and it just kind of happens all over the place and people will yell at me a lot when we go to things where i don't take a lot of pictures and i say because i was too busy living yeah. in the moment and it's just i want to make the memories yes i feel bad that i don't like i don't have a, a lot of pictures of blizzcon and i never do but everybody I was else say does, that. so I wind up getting them too. Yeah, I, we, I we end up getting great me. pictures from other people, and then like, but then I look back and was on like, I guess this is how I know I had a good time. I don't have any phone yeah. pictures on my phone. I don't have any pictures on my phone, and so that is probably one of the most uh, glaring things that I'm nostalgic about is the that we don't seem to focus on living the experiences that we are in versus trying to capture them. Yeah. Yep. I I was um. I mean, I'm just gonna. I'm, it's it's, it's a similar, but um, my wife and I will like we like to go see theater whenever like there's a show touring coming through LA. Mm -hmm. We go see it at the Pantages, and there was one. This recently there was a show at the Pantages that we went to see called uh, Legally Blonde the Musical, and we. I'm sorry, no. <clears throat> we saw Legally Blonde two weeks ago. The show okay. we saw at the Pantages was called Waitress the Musical. Gotcha. Um, Waitress. Is based on the um, the book and the movie. That, I don't know if you guys, have, it, but it's a great musical. Anyway, the end of the the curtain call um, is uh, 
it, it's you know everyone's celebrating everyone's cheering and the guy in the front row has a cell phone and he's recording the whole curtain call of these people coming out and like bowing and stuff and it's just it's one of those moments where you're supporting like everything these artists are doing but also you know everything the theater has to offer the production people the sound it's just it's like that moment of the show where you're just you're just you're just congratulating them and you're saying thank you and just something yeah. about the phone at the end dro drove me insane like i almost couldn't stop myself from saying something to this person and yeah. and and wait we liked that play so much that came to the pantages it it then transitioned down to orange county and this past weekend we went to go see it again in orange county and the same thing happened really the same thing happened the guy in the front row pulls out the cell phone and records the curtain call and now i'm thinking to myself is this like a trend is this like yeah. a thing that happens yeah. but it's just like i want to no slap idea. the phone out of his hand and i feel like it's the same thing for you at concerts yeah yeah and it, it you know it, it clearly happens more in the younger generations now and that's fine it just it's difficult for me i don't like it <laughs> so i get grouchy about it <laughs> the people this past weekend were not a younger generation they were they were of an older generation than me so i yeah. was i was really hoping that they would respect you know that whole process and you know yeah. thing so it's oh, man it just drives me nuts is there okay so we should probably talk a little bit about some of the feedback and stories we got from some of our listeners yeah i love um, it um related to this want to start with the first one from square sure yeah yeah let's take a look here okay so square said uh my dad showed me technology from a very young age from before i could remember so i get pretty nostalgic about anything i played watched as a kid and uh, learned how they worked this helped because it turned me into the person that i am now Technology gave me a basis of loving history, whether it be on TV or playing Medal of Honor on PlayStation 1. Now being 18 and looking towards the future, I have thought about being a history professor just from the love of history that technology showed me from a young age and how it all connects back to my dad. <laughs> I love this. I do too. Because in my generation, is I still teach my parents technology every time I go home to visit. I get the, right. uh, honey, can you show me how to do this on my computer? That's where, <laughs> that's where I am, too. I mean, it's just, yep. that's the other reason I don't, you know, answer the phone that much. Because it, it might be someone calling for technical support or something like tech that. Support. Right? <laughs> oh. I have done FaceTime tech support with my dad oh, many man. times. Where it's like, hold your phone to your computer so I can see what you're doing. <laughs> Yikes. But he has given me tech support for like, uh, you know, home improvement stuff. Like, Dad, okay. how do I fix this? So we've done it the opposite way. So it works. It same works. same exact thing here. Like, yeah. We we bought a house uh, last December, so a year ago now. And my dad mm -hmm. has flown out to help us with the house like several times because <laughs> I don't know what the hell I'm doing. But then in return, he'll call me and expects some help with his cell phone or his computer and things like that. So. Yes, yes. Trade. my parents have been a, a very huge financial support for me in the last few years. And so, yes, they get technical support whenever they whenever ask. They <laughs> whenever. The give and take, the give and take. But yes. I think it's so it's so cool that's what Square mentions here because um, technology showed him um, something else that he could be interested in. You know, and I think yeah. that that's, you know, they say that's, sometimes they say that like, um, like it's like a gateway drug or something like that yeah. as they refer to like technology is a gateway drug to so many other avenues and things you can explore um you know and mm -hmm. for him it was history like who who would have thought that that's so wild to me it's what brought him to the yeah. thing that could very much be his passion i yeah. don't know if i'm gonna feel about that yeah <laughs> i do. I bet you do uh-huh so big scary duck wrote us and said technology has been the driving force in my life since i was in since a young age I grew up in sunny Los Angeles, but at the age of 12, my family moved to Knoxville, Tennessee. The move to Tennessee was a real culture shock. After the move, I became extremely depressed, gained a lot of weight, and in general, felt lost. My out was computers. After moving, I built my first PC. I was, of course, excited to have a PC for gaming. At this time, Elder Scroll Morrowind was just coming out, and I was already an avid Diablo and StarCraft player. But what I didn't know is I would get into programming, and I ended up teaching myself ActionScript, more commonly known today as FlashScript. 
and learning Visual C++ and dabbling with other languages. I became pretty obsessed, ending up focusing on development over school and most everything else. After one year of playing in my own sandboxes and building just to learn, I ended up partnering with a large anime shop called Anime Castle and convinced them to let me start their first e-commerce platform. Hmm. The experience of using technology to bring access to something I love to those who didn't have access or education around it was an experience that began me on the journey that I'm still on today. That is wild. That is so cool. And he, and he, he also added, for what... What am I nostalgic about that technology has changed? When I was really young, I had a 130 in one circuit board, and even though it was so simple, learning how circuitry worked and being able to physically touch and manipulate technology is something I think we're moving further away from, hmm. and I wish we embraced more. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. That. yeah, yeah. Mainly just because we're where do we now live in the place where we can make them cheap, and then yep. throw it away, buy it new. <laughs> Just to piggyback off that, you know, there's there's a lot of um, that this is something that the next generation probably won't know. And, you know, I, I, I take uh, great joy in building my own computers. I built my wife's computer. I built my parents' computer. Just kind of, you know, manipulating those pieces. It's kind of like big boy Legos or something. You know, yeah, you're, you're yeah. making something cool and it's really fun. And with these technologies that are coming out today where you're gaming in the cloud, I think NVIDIA has something uh, in beta right now, like a closed beta where you can pay a monthly subscription fee and with your internet, through the strength of your internet, you can access that hardware, you know, way out there in some farm, you know, some, you know, data center and you can play yeah. that game at like max settings. And I know that that's probably going to be where the future takes us here. Um, I think there was another company called Shadow Gaming or something doing the same thing and it's just, you know, a lot of uh, generations to come probably won't know the joy of, you know, pulling out a graphics card or like setting in a um, a CPU or, you know, like putting putting thermal paste around a fan or something like that. You know, they're just they're not going to they're not going to know that. I will not know that because I will, will rely on lovely people like you to build me my computer because I do not have that brain for I'll it. I'll do it. I'll do it every time. <laughs> I will just have to buy it new or, or have someone else be like, I'll build it, ship it to you. There you go. But yeah, no kidding. But it, I, I totally understand the draw yeah. in wanting to do it, which is awesome. Yeah. yeah. And then we got one more. Sure. You can read that one. Yeah. this I really love this one. And, and, and by the way, guys, um, you know, we're reading snippets or blurbs of your letters and, and, and just not because we don't you know, we're not obsessed with the whole letter, but just because it's a, it's a time thing for the show. So, um, yeah. but we, we took out a little snippet of metal magic's letter here. And I love this. It says technology enabled me to make lasting friendships in my early to late teens and have experiences that I couldn't have dreamed of. Otherwise I'm nostalgic for the simpler time when everything was less prolific and you could mark time periods when you were playing a singular great game in the nineties and the early two thousands, when there weren't 10 triple a titles a year, where a game came out and there was a sample of the game on a demo disc that came with a magazine subscription where you didn't feel like you had to read a review to deem whether a purchase was worth it or not, where all your friends at school or online could talk about how great X game was. I mean, how cool was that getting the, the magazine, popping it open right in the center. There was that demo disc mm -hmm. that you would pop into your console or your computer and you could play that game. It was, I mean, and if you had the subscription of the magazine, it was like once a month, you knew you were going to get something really cool that you could play yeah. and test out. And that's, I'm going to miss that for sure. Uh, I'm going to miss yes. that. Yes. For me, it was the, the first Tomb Raider. That was the, that was the game. What on a PlayStation? Like... It, 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 yeah, it was, I got that too. And I think I was like subscribed to like PlayStation magazine or something like that. Okay. And I got that okay. in the the magazine and I popped it and I played it and I was like, I have to get this game whenever it comes out. And then, and I would like mark my calendar and the game would actually come out on that calendar date because they weren't working on some type of DLC or something like that. It was just the game came out on a date and it was just like a magical thing. Yeah. yeah. And, and for that matter, the game came out and, and everyone waited in line at midnight for it. There wasn't a digital copy that you could install beforehand. There was there was launch events and things like that. Yep. It's, 
you had to buy the physical copy and bring it home and yep. yeah you didn't go give, buy it from amazon and have it shipped to you you had to go to the store no. to get it this is a slippery <laughs> slope we're going down here it's a slippery slope <laughs> but metal magic I, I, oh, oh sorry i was just gonna say uh, metal magic the, the other thing you mentioned in your letter was how special certain games were that you played like one you mentioned was star wars galaxies and that was a big big game for me i don't know if we've discussed that before but Star Wars Galaxies was essentially just another world. I mean, that was my first MMO. But the fact that, um, you know, in my own personal life, I didn't have many friends, but then I could jump into the game and I would have this, you know, entire city of friends. The city that I built was something that changed my life at that time. So I, I, I too hold a very special place in my heart for that game. And you and I should talk about that sometimes. So, yeah. Do you have a game like you that, Jules? The, the the game that just kind of took you in yeah um, that really brought you into um online uh, communities or something like that yeah the very first one that i had was that was like that was city of heroes okay okay yeah now we're and, talking uh, was, yeah that was my first mmo i didn't understand what they were <laughs> um i couldn't understand that you were paying money monthly <laughs> to pay to play a game and i thought that was insane but my friends at the time were like, no, 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 you get to play, you make, get to make your own superhero, and you get to play that superhero, and then these folks were also very much into role-playing as well, mm. and I I was kind of new to them, and so I was like, okay, what's role-playing? <laughs> I didn't know what that was either. I Now, take a moment, step back, I've always been a nerd, but and I was a huge gamer, but I did not have consoles after the Atari 2600. Mm -hmm. And so my friends were the ones that I would play like uh, Nintendo and, and, and GameCube and stuff like that on. But I never owned those games. So I had this long break of time where I wasn't able to play games just because it wasn't a thing. Yeah, I, I still loved games. I would go to an arcade all the time and just go, go bonkers over the games. But there's that kind of coming back in was City of Heroes. Okay. And... So I had to kind of understand the world of RP. I had never played D&D. I'd never done all of that. And I made my first character, and she I fell in love with her instantly. I created a story behind her. I, oh, man. She became my alter ego. Yep. Um, and I would role play her for hours. Oh, my gosh. I loved her so much. I still, to this day, use an email address with that name of that character. Oh, man. Yup, yeah, from 2005. Oh, that's good. Or before. Um, that's and good. because that game was so instrumental to me, but because it became such a max, like you, so long to get to max level, and it was just like, so then I switched to WoW. And yeah. then, rest and then the rest is history, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. That, was, that was the thing about Star Wars Galaxies to me. I think I felt so much, um, so connected to my character. The reason being is because one of the coolest parts about that game was you weren't choosing a class and playing that class out. You know, right. it was you were making a character, an individual, and then you were um, adopting professions. You were like getting jobs or something. Mm -hmm. So you know, you could completely revamp your your character, learn totally new skills, but you were the same character. Um, yeah. And I don't think I'll, I mean so the equivalent to World of Warcraft would be like leveling a mage to level 120 and then all of a sudden at 120 being like you know what i think i want to be a rogue and i'm just gonna yeah. like learn how to be a rogue and you know that's <laughs> it, you know, that doesn't happen you re-roll so yeah i mean just there's you know there's nostalgia in games like absolutely. it's just wild absolutely they they shape our lives and and yeah. they and i think we if you want to we can do the, the storytelling part about games related stories that shaped our lives around games too i think that would be fun sure. um, unless you have one prepared but sure. before we get to that point we're going to transition out of this section i think and talk about sending your thoughts and feedback about the show i i hope you have all enjoyed this discussion that we have had i could i could swear we could go on for, for hours but then we will be the jewels and coffee for hours so <laughs> this yeah. is like uh you was we're, we're trying to try to not do that to your poor ears but you can send your your thoughts and feedback to us at podcast at heroeshearth.com that's our email 
if you are part of Coffee's Discord, there is a section in that Discord that has a podcast. We both read it. It's a podcast room. You can send us stuff there. You can send us messages. DMs are my DMs are open on Twitter. Yeah, you can just send us messages everywhere. It just let us know what you think because we love hearing about this. This show is about you, therefore we want to hear it. Um, and I will also say this: you guys are also encouraged to send us topics to talk about on the show. As you can see, it does not have to be about Blizzard. It can be no. about life. Yeah, we only you know minutely talked about Blizzard today. <laughs> minutely. <laughs> we did talk about we talked we talked some World of Warcraft and yeah I mean yeah. But yeah, the I mean, sky's the limit. my sky's goal the limit. for the show, hopefully, is that we get to a place where we're so comfortable with each other. You know, you and I are becoming really, really good friends. I, I hold you in very close regard and I love you so much. But I I, I, my hope is that we get so close with you guys that we just we discuss things that are just going on in our lives. I, yeah. I don't want I don't want you guys to necessarily be afraid to send in a letter or a message you know, that you want to be explored on the show that's not related to our topic that we're trying to shape the show around. If you guys have a, a strong feeling or just something that is going on in your your life that you want to see explored on the show or just uh, discussed, I, I hope that you'll reach out and, you know, we can sometimes just draw inspiration from that and, and shape mm -hmm. how this goes based on your experience. So. We'll lead by example too. Like I, I have some ideas of some topics that we can kind of go and explore. May get a little bit more touchy feely, and I think that's good. Um, we're all here to just support each other and build each other up. So, I think with that, we're gonna transition into the little fun part of the show. It's called "Tell Me a Story." Hey, coffee, tell me a story. Hey, Coffee, what story do you have for me today? So I, I thought of one that I wanted to tell, and I still want to tell it, but then, you know, I've got we were just talking about Star Wars Galaxies, and I have a million in there, but yep. let's start with the Star Wars Galaxies one, because I'm fresh, I'm bring thinking it. about that right now. But, bring um, it, bring it. So when I played Star Wars Galaxies, um, you know, it was on the Intrepid server, and servers were important back then, because just like in WoW, in, in Star Wars Galaxies, like vanilla WoW, I mean, and galaxies those were the people that you played with you couldn't play cross server there was nothing like that um so this was our this was our world this was our community and i was i was one of the first uh jedi characters um on intrepid on that server and everyone knew that this this jedi had a bounty hunter as well named coffee and my bounty hunter's name was coffee so when i started streaming about a year ago somebody popped into my channel and was like there's were you the Jedi on Intrepid and that just blew my freaking mind and it just no. everything came full circle and I was like this like online gaming community is incredibly large but also so very small so freaking small is, is that the person right there the no camera? no okay okay I was like wait a minute is that, that would be amazing that would be amazing <laughs> are you here now <laughs> um oh wow so yeah so so then um can I tell my other story too as yes, it relates of to course. Okay, so my other story relates to Thanksgiving because my wife and I had a lovely, lovely Thanksgiving with Smoogee and his wife on Thanksgiving. And awesome. it was a, a just a lovely evening. Smoogee made incredible food and my wife made a bunch of food and we just celebrated life and discussed all we were thankful for. And in that discussion, I realized that I met, I met Smoogee um, through streaming like through games and it's just made me so very thankful for you know not just smoogee but all of you and the relationships that we're creating and and flushing out like every day so yeah oh so awesome i love it <laughs> there's there's an, an amazing amount of connection that we make in in games um and it just it's hard to it's like i i will talk about the first time that I ever rated in WoW because it was a pretty cool story. Um, <laughs> this is gonna be good. <laughs> it, it was it was really good. This is gonna be good. So the I I had been playing WoW for it was in bef before bur like right after Burning Crusade launched or right before Burning Crusade launched and so we'd been playing playing playing. I wound up um, switching my main character 
to a paladin. Paladin, they were my thing. I was just like, I loved my paladin so much. Her name was Jessamine. Jessamine. And Jessamine. And Ooh. she was my girl. She, she sounds hot. Girl. Can I say that? She was hot. She had like the okay. bob hair. Okay, all right. Blonde bob, human hair. You know, like she was Ooh, freaky. Oh, man. The bob? Yeah, she, she, was, she was like, she was kind of smoking. So anyway, <laughs> um, okay. it was my, I used to play all the time with my now ex-husband and our friend who we brought over from city of heroes like he went reluctantly out of city heroes and came to wow yikes and we'd been making some friends around and there were there was someone who was like hey we're gonna go into a karazhan raid um and i was like oh i wish we could go on a karazhan raid so i kind of mentioned it in our guild chat and uh and they're like well we'll keep you in mind for for that at the time I was called Jess because of Jessamine. Jessamine. And so that was my nickname then. And they wound up messaging me and they're like, Jess, Jess, Jess. <laughs> we got to we got to go. You got to you want you want to raid right now? And I was like, "Wait, what?" And they're like, "Okay, how about in like 4 hours? Can you guys raid in like 4 hours?" My friend Jason wound up going home to his house. He he was over at the time. Went and got his computer, came to our house and like set up his computer in our in our uh, office. The three of us land this raid. <laughs> and it was like we were so excited and so scared and we were so hyped that we wound up the room got so hot cuz we were such like we were Oh yeah. It was, the, that's it gets warm the in there. It got so hot. I remember sweating like oh insane gosh. amounts during the middle of winter trying to do this raid and it took us four hours to do two bosses because it was a pug oh, <laughs> and yikes. we did not care we were just like i was like we are raiding you guys this is the coolest thing in the world we're raiding <laughs> and it doesn't matter that we keep wiping over and over again and that was my very first raid and wow. i was terrible and frightened and scared and i was a healer and i didn't know what i was doing and that was where my raiding started that's how it all started and that is awesome. That memory of being in that room and how hot we were. And I'm sorry, there's two guys in that room and there's me. And the two guys are a little smelly. And so oh, <laughs> I remember, no. I remember the, just like the feel of that. And, but it just like, I don't know. It's still a really good memory. It brings <laughs> it brings like it brings me back to that World of Warcraft South Park episode where there's that guy yes. that like never bathes or showers. He's just yes. in there. Oh man, that was that was yeah. you and your two friends, Jules, just getting. Yes, it's like oh my lord, that was that was pretty funny. I, so, <laughs> I was gonna say, my, like one of my first times raiding was um my girlfriend at the time was at home and she was in the raid and she was like, this raid's happening. Can you hurry up and race home and so we can do this raid? And I was like, oh my god, I've always wanted to do a raid. Can can you log into my character and get me in the raid? And she she did. And she got me there. And then she got me to there, too. Like, I was, still wasn't there. I was coming home from work. And she got her character and my character to Anixia's lair. This is in Classic. And put us both in there. And then she did, like, the first half of the fight with me AFK, like, on another computer. And, like, I, I run inside, get on the computer, and, like, they've already got the boss, like, 75% dead. <laughs> <laughs> but I still but I still got loot. I still got the judgment helmet. I was playing a paladin at the time too and the judgment helmet dropped and I just like I was like, yeah, I was here the whole time. It's fine. I'm pretty sure that was <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was before like damage meters and healing meters though. So like no I was gonna ask. No one knew like that I was just AFK. I, I don't know. It's whatever. They weren't checking your DPS going, uh, kick the paladin. No. Kick, kick the paladin. No. <laughs> That makes me that makes me so happy. So and it sounds I like was... we had a sort of a similar first raid though. It was it was yeah. some type of LAN experience and it was like a pub group kind of thing. Yeah, when you're kind like doing a pickup group and then you're just like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. I don't know yeah. this fight. I didn't watch YouTube videos for two hours ahead of this to know what I'm doing nope. here. No. Nope. Yeah. But it was it, it it kind of just locks in there as one of my best memories. Because Karazhan is still my favorite raid oh, out it's of awesome. all of them. It's so cool. Ones. And they and they revamped it um into like a dungeon, I think, like towards the end of the last expansion. That and it was yeah. so cool. 
yeah so, so it cool. just makes me it made me so happy and I, i'd occasionally go back in as a you know like a level 100 level 110 and just, just pop in there explore it run yeah through it. like the music i'll just like one of these days i'm probably just gonna stream something and just have like the karazhan music playing the whole time because this yeah. is gonna be the best so good <laughs> So oh, good. I love it. These are these are the stories that make my heart happy. Um, we love sharing them with you, and we enjoy having these moments of just bring a little bit of happiness and smiles to your day. So we hope that you have enjoyed it, and I think that will do it for episode two. It makes me sad to say goodbye because I, I literally could sit, sit here and talk to you. Makes me so sad because I mean I'm just out here waiting for the jewels and coffee seventy two hours, right? <laughs> We start hitting some goals in uh, Heroes Hearth. We might be making that seventy-two hey. hour comp happen. That would <laughs> be ridiculous. Would have to let us know what you're <laughs> we'd have to like, we'd have oh, to man. sleep on stream. It'd be really like bad. some lunch break or some food breaks. <laughs> be pretty good. <laughs> and as Metal Magic TV says in the chat room, hashtag episode two in the books. So yeah. we hope that you have enjoyed this time by the fire, and I think it is time to bring us out with the music that will play like this. This podcast. Not, Not that one. This one. <laughs> oh, it doesn't want to play. So we'll just make it play that way. Ah, there it is. Technical, technical difficulties are the best part of every show. <laughs> Get us rolling here. If you want to contact the show, you can email us at podcast at heroeshearth.com. And if you want to connect with us on Twitter, you can find coffee at coffee club underscore TV and me, Jules, at Jules RPG. Those are the handles you can do to follow our personal streams on Twitch, as well as get notified as when we go live. And you can join us live here at uh, twitch.tv slash coffee club underscore TV on Mondays at 6 p.m. Central and 4 p.m. Pacific. Or you can find us in podcast forms on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Pocket Cast, TuneIn, and more. If you like this show and would like to support the great entertainment brought to you by Heroes Hearth, please consider supporting them on Patreon at patreon.com slash Heroes Hearth. Thank you all so much for joining us today. And until next time, we're glad you're here. Thanks for joining us, you guys. I love it. <laughs> nice. Ah, yay! Chat room, I love you guys. I love you guys so much. Kagiri, thank you so much for the raid. You're yes, lovely. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you guys for raiding, for, for coming in and following. Um, yes, all the disclosure. follows. We missed the follows. Thank you so much. Yeah, if you want to, if you want to thank, uh, full disclosure. We are streaming on this channel right now, and we will be moving to Heroes Hearth's Twitch at some point. Full disclosure, Heroes Hearth Twitch is under review for Twitch Partner. And so uh, we have to maintain a certain number of uh, viewers for each one. And uh, so, yeah, so that's why we're yeah. on Coffee's channel for right now, which is still a wonderful place to be. But we will be moving. It's not the uh, final home, there. though. It's not the final yeah. home. Yeah, yes. it's just kind of let you guys know why we're doing this. Um, <laughs> and we're just waiting for, for hopefully a partner to come through. So then you guys can actually have uh, the ability to change resolutions, which would be fantastic. Right yes. now, it's a big pain to do that. So, yeah. So that's why we're here. Um, yeah. Do you have anybody to thank uh, for follows or subs or anything like that from your channel? I mean, Kags came through with a huge raid, a son of a jack uh, with the follow. Um, there was... I mean, I could scroll up. The Odyssey Interactive Entertainment, um, Twitch Flixers earlier with the sub, um, and and to 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 anyone I'm missing, just thank you so much for the support. It's it's incredible. I um, anyone that came in and Monster, thank you so much for the biddies, dude. You were awesome. Thank you so much, man. Uh, he says it's a great podcast. You will get uh, big and more awesome as you go. I appreciate that, Monster. Yeah, th this whole. This whole experience, Monster, I, I've, I've said it before, but it's just, I'm just having so much fun. And this is something new for me. And new means challenging. And when I look at a challenge, I get excited. And when I get excited, I just, I have like devote absolutely every part of my being to working on a project. So, um, and it's just like, 
when someone, first of all, let me just give you a bit of advice. If someone offers you a job and says, hey, you want to do a podcast with the Jules RPG? You're going to do it, right? <laughs> You're going to take that job because it's Jules RPG and you'd be stupid not to do it. So I'm just honored to be up here and learning as I go from the incredibly talented Jules. Ah, stop it. Stop it. You're going to make me all big headed and I don't want to be big headed. So. Be big headed. You can be big headed. Tatsuki Chu, two months in a row. She says, I love you both. Tatsuki, you are <laughs> fantastic. We love you too so much. We got to hang soon, by the way. Tatsuki is a LA local. So we're going to hang. Definitely. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We don't have to wait um, for the next event, whatever that might be. We can just hang. Yeah. You know, I find it because there's a lot of folks that are, um, that are in the, Blizzard community who live in Minnesota too, and I just find that it's like half the time I get so busy and I don't I go out and hang with people, and I should. Um, yeah. The 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 person that I talked to about in my in the the pilot episode who lives here, we actually wound up going out for dinner after BlizzCon because we were like we didn't even see each other at BlizzCon, so yeah. we saw each other like once at BlizzCon, so we're like, here's what's wow. your BlizzCon like? Here's what my BlizzCon was like. <laughs> Well, that's good. That, I mean, that's even that's even more special, though, that you get to share some yeah. like private time, quality time. Like yeah, that. no, and but I need to do that. Like, so now that winter has started, we have to force ourselves to like go out of the house because I don't want to go out. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, when it's nineteen degrees now. <laughs> what did you just say to me? Nineteen, 19 degrees. Nineteen. I know. I, I'm like getting cold just thinking about it. Hold on a second. Can you just sit by the fire and just like, just can we just onesie it up now? You're just getting me cold thinking about it. Jesus. I know. Welcome to the world that I live in. But you, it is you're... fucking cold out here in Minnesota. You're right, square <laughs> fan. It's 19 degrees in Minnesota right now. You're you're lucky enough to live uh, near Tim and Nicole though, right? You see them pretty often. Yeah. They, so here's okay. Here's a story that I will not tell on the actual podcast. Oh but god. I We're getting the inside it. scoop I, here, guys. Yeah, this the, one's pretty this one's pretty wild. Pull up a chair. Do you remember a couple of weeks ago when Nicole and Tim said that um there was a like a, a confrontation out in their street? Yeah. Um where there was a man hitting a woman and Tim ran out in the street. So I had gone to Nicole and Tim's house to pick up something, but they were busy and they left it on the front porch and I knew that it was going to be there. Like we had arranged this and they live about 20 minutes away from where I am. So I told them I would be at their house around 1130 ish. And so I was um, picked up the box and I left and I came home. I was home for about 15 minutes. And Nicole texted me and said, were you here? And I said, yes. And she goes, oh my God, you just missed this thing and i said she explained like what had happened and i said was it a blue beetle volkswagen beetle that the guy was in and she goes yes and i oh, was god. like oh my god because what happened was i turned onto their street and they kind of live off this main street and i turned onto their street and there was this blue volkswagen beagle that beetle that was sitting in the middle of the road right as i turned on the street so i pulled up behind the guy and he was parked in the middle of the street and i just sat behind him for a second like do i beep at him do i not and then he just like pulled into like a spot on the on the road i drove past him and parked like a car in front of him went to nicole and tim's house picked up the box and i left I must have missed that incident by about two minutes. Oh my gosh. And so I was like, I'm like telling her everything I saw because the police are still there. And I'm like, yeah, wow. I saw him. I didn't see the guy. I never saw him. But talk about weird. <laughs> just like, That's just, whoa. I get, I mean, I don't know. Is that right place, right time? Or is that wrong place, wrong time? Like you just, just I guess, missed it. I mean, as a, according to my parents and my dad, who is a, a retired police chief, he was like, I'm so glad that you did not get involved with that um, because I was literally probably minutes away from seeing that happen. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It's just so weird. I didn't share that story because it was not my story to share right. in the, at the time. You know, it was 
it was I didn't have anything. But the coincidence of it was like, whoa, <laughs> that's freaky. So that is just crazy. Yeah. No, I mean, um, yeah. I don't know. Like, do you ever like? So do you ever wonder what you would do in situations like that? Like sometimes things like you see things on on online or you know on the news. Do you ever ask yourself like what what would I do if that happened right in front of me? Like would I get involved or would I would I you know hide or something like that? Yeah, and I I think for me my honest answer to that question is if I know this if I know the person in or the situation I'm more likely to get involved than if it was a stranger just because yeah. I don't know the safety of the situation. Um. But, like, I've had situations where I was working at a job where someone, like, passed out or something, and then I would just jump to action because I knew, yeah, you know, you knew who this I was. first aid or I was in charge or whatever. I was familiar with my surroundings, but um, I'm the kind of person that's been trained, you know, by a law enforcement official to not get into things that you should not, you mm -hmm. know, assess the situation and not get in trouble so yeah i don't know i i don't yeah. really know i i think about that a lot though especially like if there was somebody on the side of the road who was like hurt or something would i because my initial instinct will always be is this a trap <laughs> or is, i was is just gonna say danger? that that's what i think about too is i like to think yeah. that I, I will help someone but then i just like in the back of my mind i i, I don't know if this is a bad quality of myself but i always see a darkness in someone i think that there's i i don't know i just always expect the worst from people i really do it's just well i i do i mean i'm just i'm afraid of the intentions of others like i've been um we're just gonna tell stories all night yeah. um <laughs> i was uh in san antonio for um for pack south one year a couple years ago and there was a girl who walked up to our group and was asking them to use their fo use a phone because she had gotten stranded out there and like my initial instinct almost was give her you know help her and somebody like somebody in the group says do not give her your phone she's going to steal it and yeah. That was probably me. I wa <laughs> well, yeah, but I, I just was like, oh, God. And then that has happened to me again. It happened to me in Salt Lake City Airport where a girl was standing off by herself, wanted to use my phone, and immediately thought of San Antonio. And I'm like, I, I got to tell her phone doesn't work or battery's dead or something like that and just keep walking because it is a scam. Yeah. But – it's a common thing. I don't <clears> – yeah, but I'm – so I, I go with the back and forth thing like – I want to help people, but I also need to protect myself, especially because I'm a single woman, and therefore I need to make sure that I am vigilant all the time, which is hard. One of the, uh, you know, we'll just keep telling stories. It's fine. We'll just we'll go back and forth. Here's <laughs> here's a here's like a thing that like just kind of blew my mind, or it was like an eye opener for me. Is BlizzCon is our magical place, right? It's kind of like yeah. our. It's our land of just pure joy and happiness and all positivity. And last year, um, <clears throat> it was it was my first time taking my wife to BlizzCon, and we were having a great time. And she goes to she wants to take place in um, the Hearthstone. I forget what, it's like a fireside gathering where you play the game on the Wi-Fi like with people around you. Mm -hmm. And you get like right. a card back and stuff like that. So <clears throat> she wanted to hook up to the public Wi-Fi and she hooked up to this public Wi-Fi that was not the public Wi-Fi. It was like Blizz it was like BlizzCon free Wi-Fi or something like that. Ooh. And um they got they got like all of her stuff like within the day, like her credit card was compromised and stuff like that, just from hooking oh. up to this wi-fi network at blizzcon that was called like blizzcon wi-fi and it was just like wow who is doing this and it's like this is supposed to be a place where like all that stuff you don't have to think about that for a few days and like all you can this is just like your this is our magic place that we have where all of the negativity and and um horrors of that outside world don't leak in to this place and just like that was such a bummer and but well, that's one of the examples where I think about 
just there's a darkness in people and it trickles into like all sorts of things and i always just wonder if somebody's trying to get you or somebody's trying to get us you know i i mean i struggle with that too and um the so i think that's probably one of my challenges especially with what i do for a living is that i am very I'm very cautious of people and I, it becomes difficult for me to connect with people that I don't know very well. There's a wall that I will just make sure that you cannot go past after a certain point, unless I've gotten a chance to know you better. And it's, you know, it, it's a struggle because I've had it where that line has been crossed or people have taken advantage or, um, and you just have to be, suspicious of everybody um and like literally today i messaged a friend and said do you know this person because there's something weird there and i don't know like i've been getting these messages and oh boy and i asked yeah like i had to ask somebody else like do you know this person because i don't and i think you might and it's just oh yeah yep yeah and 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 the the good thing is that i am blessed to be around and hashtag blessed to be around people who uh, surrounded by people who are good decent kind human beings but mm -hmm. i've also been put in, in positions where i wasn't with those people or i was taken advantage of by someone who i thought was trustworthy and they weren't or they had ulterior motives makes you suspicious it does and so like that original question would you do this it sounds tough. Like I sound like kind of a bitch when I say I would really need to make sure that I was safe before yeah. I would jump into that. I agree. And I hate that about it. I hate that about this world. <laughs> I would, I would urge everyone to really consider that's such a good point. And just before you, when you're considering making a big, uh, you know, a big move, uh, you know, in terms of a a whatever it is in your life, whether you're helping someone out or you're, you know, you're, you know, taking your, you know, taking your dog on a walk or, uh, you know, whatever it may be, just like stopping for a moment before doing anything and just asking yourself, am I safe or do I feel safe? I yeah. think is really important because half the time, you know, uh, these kinds of scary events are solved by just you having a gut feeling about not feeling safe doing some. So it's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's that was something I learned a long time ago is like if your gut feels off about something then just trust it just mm -hmm. trust it I can't tell you how many times like I've just someone on an internet and I'm just like mm, I don't yeah. know about this person and everyone's like no they're great blah 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 and then like that I just saw there was someone who um, got thrown in jail for child pornography and I was like yep see I just I knew there was something not right like I just knew it and you just you gotta trust you gotta you gotta trust what you feel if you don't feel it um I look at that and just say you know sometimes people just don't see it or they choose not to see it and so mm -hmm. okay that's fine yeah <sighs> or they're just preoccupied yeah. with something else you know it's just like yeah but it's so interesting that well, we're having this conversation the day of the technology episode because yeah. I feel like technology ties in here somewhere. Whether it, whether it be that technology has helped cause a lot of these issues or is it just that technology has shined a greater spotlight on these things that were already happening around us. And I, I, either way, it's technology is rooted in here somewhere. So I didn't tell this story on the show because I didn't want it to be negative, but the first person so i was in college when we were doing all these connecting with people on irc chats and then finding out that there were certain people who lived close by that maybe we could just like meet up with and i wound up meeting this guy on uh irc and he was just like he he was that kind of person who was just super charismatic and super and then He's just like, I love you. I think you're amazing. I want to meet you. And I am, what, 19? And I'm thinking this person is amazing. And I should meet this person. And he lives in, like, Philadelphia. And I, t I, and I lived in New Jersey at the time. And I took the train to go meet him. And oh, he man. stood me up. Yeah. Like, he just didn't show up. 
and I was just like, and my, I, I, because I was in college, I don't think I told my parents about it because I was like with my friends and doing this kind of thing, and I wound up going there. It was that that certain like thing that you didn't know about safety on the internet and like meeting people. Yep. My roommate. I mean, it could have been so worse though, right? God, what, yeah. Oh like, my gosh. God, yeah, and like my roommate wound up my college roommate wound up meeting a guy who was in Iowa who drove all the way from Iowa to Pennsylvania was where we were going to school and he turned out to be like a Klingon not not the Kling like a Klinger oh Klingon. Cl stage stage three Klinger <laughs> stage three Klinger and like wouldn't leave her alone and then he didn't want to oh, leave and so she had to like tell him to go and he cried he, like he cried he didn't want to leave and <laughs> wow <laughs> These were the days that you didn't know about internet safety, like not giving out information about things. And that's where yeah. all the internet safety stuff started coming out. And it was just like, man, it could have been so much worse though. Yeah. It seriously could have. Yeah. It's, it's like, uh, I mean, when I think about, um, cause Emma asked me sometimes, she's like, what do you think about this situation online? And if this was our kid, how would you advise, our son or daughter on this situation. And I think back to myself and I'm like, my gut reaction is, well, no, they're not meeting somebody they've never met in person. No way. And then I think about my own life and how I've met my greatest friends, my only friends really, like my close friends based on the internet. And yeah, I took that, I took that plane to Chicago, you know, that first time to meet two people I had never met before in my entire life because I had this such a strong connection with them online you know and i think that i don't want to deny my son or daughter that incredible experience but i am also so scared i'm so scared of that yeah and it's because of them not knowing um because like when they're the the girls are talking about it and more in a midnight side you're talking about it they get d debated some or debated a bunch of guys like you, you it, it's so easy midnight to society's do it and... doing the debating <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of what i was alluding to earlier and oh, like man. taking on a different persona is i was like i was not a tall blonde right and i am role playing what? as a tall blonde <laughs> like, <laughs> what was your paladin's you know, name again jasmina or Je Jessamine. <laughs> Jessamine was a tall blonde just getting it, right? She was I out there. I wasn't talking about Jessamine, though. <laughs> Maybe you were already Jessamine. Maybe I was. Maybe I was. But, it, uh, but yeah, like, you you can just become anybody you want to. And, yeah, and then you just you, you become this persona, and then, the, you know, people are like, <laughs> 19F Callie always be. Oh, know? my God. <laughs> ASL, ASL, Amorin, ASL. God, I, 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 I'm not proud of those days. I'm not, but you know, I will, I will pretty much talk about anything on this show except for the things that I am actually really not allowed to talk about, which is basically <laughs> my last marriage. So, <laughs> I'm not kidding, I can't talk about it. Oh wow. Um, so yeah, I'll tell you a little bit more about that offline. Um, but other than that. I'm pretty much an open book for most people. So <laughs> I feel the same way. That's why I'm just like excited yeah. to get into like some weird conversations with you on stream. Discuss this <laughs> conversation good. that we had for the show didn't go anywhere where I thought it would. And I'm and it went places. I'm so happy it did. Me too. It's really so, exciting. Yeah. I just, that is the beauty of what we're doing. The storytelling yeah. is, Oh, it makes me so happy. It's good stuff. <laughs> Me too. I like it's like that's that's all I've ever wanted to do in my life is help tell stories. Like be a small yeah. part of telling stories. So this is this just makes sense and this is incredible. It's like nothing I've ever experienced before, truly. It's Good. pretty wild. Good. Well, it's only going to become more great, intense, uh scary, um powerful, impactful. Um yeah, like I just like the sky's the limit with what we can do with this. Um, oh, Atria, I'm sorry, that sucks. Cause I my parents went through the uh, identity theft like Emma did. Oh, jeez. And it was terribly bad. Like they got 
they got nailed and mm. their like their phone numbers got stolen because they got into their Verizon accounts and took their numbers and ported them out so they couldn't get any of their any of their uh, confirmations everything uh. my mom lost they lost so much um yeah even now to this day my parents don't online bank because they mm. they're afraid to yeah my oh. dad was um scammed through email he got like some notification about a bill that he said was overdue or something like that and he like paid this bill and they took the money and then their second thing their bank like flagged it but they got that money so i mean it's like i worry about my parents especially my dad and my mom in this in this day and age where there's just so many people out there with so many ways to steal from you um yeah. in ways that my parents just have they can't even conceptualize those methods yeah. or, or, or you know so it's just scary to me super scary to me it is very scary and you know the sad the sad side of it is that that is not going to be a problem forever um yeah it was an interesting thing to me so you know you know the uh thing that's been happening now with movie theaters where um there is a like you can pick your seats um yep. that they're assigned seats at movie theaters and um I've been thinking for all along, like, this is the greatest fucking idea ever because it's just, you know, yeah. I mean, I don't have to fight to try to find a seat. I've got my seat. I can just plunk my butt down in my seat and do it. And I was talking to my grandma, who is 88 years old, last time I was visiting in September, and she was saying about how she and her girlfriends like to go see the movies every Friday, but if it's a popular movie they may not get to go see it because they can't go online. They don't have computers to pick their seats. So they wind up having to sit in the front row because that's the only seats that are available for a really popular movie, which then they can't see. And oh, wow. I was like, wow, I didn't even think about that. Yep. That is, it kind of blew my mind in a moment where I was just like, I... I understand that this is a problem and it's not always going to be a problem. Yep. That's true. Yeah. Just kind of blew my mind. So, <laughs> so there you go, chap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh gosh. Midnight. That PC, your PC has a virus and gosh, remember? And the, and the things like when you would go to your parents' house and they would have like 15 toolbars in their browser because oh. they'd added all those toolbars. Yeah. Yeah, that, what else, like, uh, they'd have, like, a million different windows open of the same thing yep. because they were yep. just spam clicking on that bad boy, thought it wouldn't open, or, yep. they've got all these Google Chrome extensions that you've never heard of, like, I don't know, that comes, like, pre-installed with some kind of software that does something that Windows already does, or just, like, things like that, it's like, Oh, gone no. to the days of having to use a disk to install software anyway so and then have the, to worry about all that extra stuff the biggest thing that gets my parents because they're be, they're wanting to explore social media and stuff like that are the um like sponsored ads like that mm -hmm. appear in the feed because mm -hmm. they, they just click on anything in the feed because they think that their friend posted this thing you know and then they mm -hmm. click on it and it's some advertisement or something like some video starts playing and then they click on that and then they're being tried they're like someone's trying to sell something to them and then they want to buy it it's just like a, uh, it's like oh man i don't know yeah. that i don't know that that generation is equipped to <laughs> combat I'm, this sort of thing really i was so grateful that my dad wanted to buy a mac laptop because that meant very that secure he, Oh, yeah. So you didn't have yeah. to worry about viruses. And then he was willing to try to learn the iOS um, platform, which was an insanely awesome. And there was mm. a bit of a learning curve. And I sat there for a couple of hours with him. And like he's like, how do I get all my files from that computer to this computer? And I'm yeah. like, OK, all right, let's get these up in the cloud. Let's bring it down this way. You know, they're afraid of the cloud software, so they don't use anything related to iCloud or anything. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it was a fun trip to do it. But. I'll say that about, um, you know, as much as I am, like, huge 
supporter of PC, um, I, like there, there's definitely a useful, like there's a there's a time and a place for a MacBook, and that's one of the things that Apple does great is the security. And if I had it to do over, I would have taught my parents Mac. I think Cause it, yeah. on, it's not, it is does seem uh, easier to use too, but also just more secure. And I just worry about them on their little laptops, you know, downloading who knows what just scares the hell out of me. <laughs> oh man. There's like we just did a whole nother show. <laughs> we did. It's like we did the light side and the dark side. <laughs> the of dark technology. side of the show. Chat room, you guys will get the VOD of the dark uh, side. And then... <laughs> Yes, the, the dark side will be in the VOD. And then the <laughs> podcasters, the podcast listeners will get the beautiful light side. The happy joy joy side. <laughs> yeah. The Jedi Temple versus the Sith Academy. <laughs> Oh man, that's good. That's awesome. Uh, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us while we just chattered away and told stories. It's just fun. Yeah, this is awesome. You guys are incredible. Thank you so much. Do you guys think we'll ever run out of stories? Ever? I don't think it's possible. I don't know. Somebody, somebody said we would in the. I, there was a comment on like one of our YouTube vods, and they were like, I'm, "My only concern is that you'll run out of stories." And in the back of my head, I'm like. I really don't think that's ever gonna happen. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't know a world where I can run out of stories. I could talk for days about just you know anything. <laughs> it is. It is. The, I think that the uh, power of storytelling is such a. It, it's it's something we need to do more. It's what we can do with podcasting, kind of like no other platform mm -hmm. and that's what i love about it so yeah it's because people... i was gonna say it's because the, the the power of a story is that it can do so many different things not only is it a record in history but it has the power to make you feel something so there's yeah. a bunch of people in here with their own stories with the power to make everyone else in here feel something and yeah. what you have in this one little twitch chat room is just like a ton of individuals with the potential, that power, that magic to make someone else feel anything, whether it be sadness, happiness, anger. Yeah. It's pretty nice. Uh, telling stories has so much. There, there will be a story that will be told on this podcast where someone will take that with them and carry it with them for, for years to come. It will happen. And I'm not being, I'm not being uh, big headed about that. It's just that it happens to me all the time when I listen to podcasts. Um, somebody will tell a story and it will just stick with me and I will carry it with me and it will be something that will impact the way I think about things in the future. And that is why I do this. It is why I do all of this because I've had people tell me that you said this and it changed the way I saw things. And I was just huh? like, oh. you've told me a few <laughs> stories like that recently and it just <laughs> blows my mind. And the day that happens to me, I will probably just weep right i'll just weep yeah yeah, yeah. it's gonna be like i'm watching this is a storyteller you're a damn no good you are you, you are you are it's easy to tell a story <laughs> when you're telling half of it though right yeah well yeah you, you're uh, the there's a uh it's it's about connecting with the emotion of the story and and what it means <laughs> cry very cry baby coffee we did not we have not made coffee cry in two episodes we're still good um however god however folks you guys can if you want to like tear jerk us you can give us some uh some topic suggestions to go there yeah. we'll yeah. think about it well you know um yeah. atria says uh kagiri we need coffee to cosplay deckard <laughs> i don't think <laughs> I'm not gonna cosplay Decker, but I am gonna do cosplay on Wednesday, Wednesday night. I'm I'm doing my first cosplay. I'm very excited what? about it. Yeah. What? So what time is this? It's gonna be at ten o'clock at night. I'm doing a late night stream on Wednesday. Ten p.m. Pacific on Wednesday. Yeah, but I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start probably earlier, a little okay. earlier, just to get. You know, I might like put the cosplay on like during the stream and stuff like that. So we'll okay. see. Cause that's like midnight my time, and I'm already. I know, I know, I know. But yeah, I'm I'm pretty excited. That's so late, coffee. I don't want to miss it. I'm sure there'll be a vod somewhere. <laughs> I don't. 
I'll take a picture for you. Okay. I'm an old lady. I have to go to sleep. I know. I know. (laughs) I'm the same way. Honestly, I'm the same way. But there was there was a there's an opportunity that has come up Wednesday night that I want to take advantage of, and I want to I want to embrace the cosplay. So if anyone has any tips, you let me know. I thought you were gonna say something very different than that. Oh, jeez. What? (laughs) I don't know. I was like, did you just? No, you did not. Okay. What? She said tits. Me? Yes. Did I say tits? <laughs> no, I thought that's what you said for a second. <laughs> ah. I would never say tits. You just did. No! <laughs> Gah! Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> yes, you must. We need to play hot sometime soon, too. Yes, I want to. That sounds good. Well, this is turning into a naughty podcast. It's because Spooji's here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's because you're here, Spooji. We should. Uh, maybe so maybe like body. after the next podcast, we'll just like play Hots afterwards or something. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I doubt that. <laughs> Could be fun. You probably, what time is it? Oh, my God. Six. It's 8 o'clock already? 6 o'clock yeah. your time? Emma should be home soon, huh? Well, probably in the next hour or so. Next oh, okay. So. I was yeah. like... Yeah, she goes because like on Monday she has her like exercise classes and stuff that she does. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> Fluffy says ta ta. <laughs> yeah, ta ta's. <laughs> Tits and tots. Uh, that sounds like a really fun podcast. <laughs> this took a turn. This took a turn. <laughs> now we've got I, an after dark. <laughs> I gotta say, the jewels and coffee hour after dark. <laughs> Oh, man, it's just good. It's good in here. I like it. Good vibes. That could be very, very funny. That could be funny. Because we could tell some very dirty stories. <laughs> or or we find that it's, like, no different than the actual podcast. It's, like, we were just we find that we're just using, we're, like, talking a little naughty, but we're using, like, really silly words, like, tatas and, like, you know, like, <laughs> not. JJ. Yeah, not <laughs> profanity. <laughs> it's just, like, <laughs> it's, like, supposed to be this, like, really dark naughty thing but it's just like pg-13 versus pg and we're like yeah we're we're badass in here <laughs> we're the after school special we're the version. after school special this is late night oh, oh man, man. episode of the jewels down coffee hour <laughs> who has <laughs> Woo. Can we just keep on coming up with with genitalia vernacular? That could be fun. Yeah. Uh, I'm sitting too low again. What is <laughs> it? It's a uh, what, what is one? Um, you're something in you're something in bits. Kibbles you're, and bits. Kibbles and bits. No, uh, it's like twigs and bear twig and berries. I think that's what it is. Is you're that twi- the one? You're twig and berries. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that one gets me. <laughs> like twig and berries. <laughs> or your hoo ha. The hoo ha thing is always weird. I yeah. don't. I mean, I think it's kind of funny. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's pretty, but I I kind of. <laughs> Smoogie says the purple headed <laughs> yogurt slinger. Jesus. What? Oh, purple? Smoogie, no. Oh my. Ew, ew, ew. <laughs> ew, ew, ew. <laughs> <laughs> I just had a visual, and I don't want that visual. Oh, I don't want. Don't it. think about it too hard, for God's no, sakes. I don't... Stop talking about it. I will stop thinking about it. Gonna exchange for a shiny diamond for a few years. What's up, Mark? We talking tater tots? Yeah, we're talking tater tots. Oh, man. I mean, I said he hated that. Oop, can't say that. Oh, boy. Oh, man. Holy shit. This Thank you for room. tuning in for the Jewels and Coffee Hour After Dark. <laughs> this could be uh this this could be a moment. We could have had a moment that it's, a it's moment. completely normal. This is yes. a moment. Mm. Oh I needed that laugh. <laughs> I think I, I can't I can't think of like a better way to kind of wrap things up, honestly, with that. I, I mean, think it's perfect. I think I that's think perfect. Hold on to your dingles and who has. Oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait. We, maybe we should do this. Uh, Minute Society says, show um, show Smoogee the photos. 
Hold on. Sweat photos. So, Jules, do you have do you know about Midnight's um, photography? Yes. No. Okay. She's, I follow her on Instagram. As as you should, as as everyone else should, if they if they don't already, she's amazing. <laughs> business <laughs> yeah but um let me see here uh, she so she uh is an incredible photographer and she's done this twice now where she'll take a piece of uh coffee club merchandise and she'll do like a photo shoot with it with her sister and she just makes this just amazing art with it with the the piece that i send her it's like I mean, it's just like a t-shirt, right? But then the photo that comes back, it's not, it's no longer just a t-shirt. It's a, an item that takes you into another universe or something like that. Yeah. It's just, it's hard to, hard to say. Is but... this the one, is this the one with the, the television? Yeah. The other day? It was, okay. I don't know if everybody's seen this. So if you have it, put it up on stream for okay. sure. Okay. 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 I will. Yeah. I was going to do it. So you saw it because you're on her um, Instagram? No, I was watching oh. your stream when you oh, saw it. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. You know, I, I forgot that I showed it, it on stream. Been... I forgot that I showed it on stream. I was, I was probably Lurky, Lurky McLurkerson, but I saw it. it. Oh, my God. I think it's actually my internet that's kind of like running slow today. It's being really weird. Is it? Kind of, yeah. He went away. I know. He's showing other stuff. <clears throat> Midnight Society and I are gonna do a, a jewelry collab for her photos at some point. I have no idea what to even come close to making that could work with your photos. So uh. I do not have a clue, but we'll figure it out. Here we go. I mean, I could probably make some pretty funky shit. This is pretty good. Out. Let's let's see if this works. Real fast. Check this out, yes. Smooch. Yes. Oh, I can make whatever I want. Ooh. I think this is my favorite so far. I think it's like, I don't I know why. I love that. Holy shit. So cool. I just love the lighting behind it. Yeah. Too. It's pretty wild. Actually, this might be my so favorite. So cool. I'm not sure if that's my favorite. Dark is good, too. Yeah. Um, Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. So cool. I love this one too. I don't know. They're all awesome. Yeah, they're all gonna be used. One we're like, it's so cool though. They're all gonna be used. That's a three dollar Walmart Walmart light says so midnight. <laughs> Crazy. Um, midnight, okay. Do you want something that's like on the neck, like a like a necklace versus a bracelet? Because that'll probably that'll probably help my brain come up with stuff. Walk or come up with stuff. Isn't it wild that we just like? I don't know. I just feel like we've we have this community of just like the most talented people, like different different styles of art and different passions. But like, holy shit. Mm -hmm. I've never seen a more creative group of people. It just blows my mind. It's insane. Necklace, earrings, bracelet. Okay. All right. I can come up with something. There's like artists, musicians, and actors, and just, just everything is in here. It's just nuts. I love that, too. And working around creative people elevates uh, like yeah. the way you think, too. Right. I, that is something. Yeah. It's one of my most favorite things about working for, I'll give him a little plug, working with for Workhorse, because he is literally just ideas out everywhere and sees things in a way that doesn't always, like, I go, oh, that's so smart. Like, I didn't yeah. think about that. And so, and I'll do the same thing to him where I'll think about something and he didn't think about it. And it's just mm -hmm. like that collaboration, making your brains work in a way that they don't normally work is mm -hmm. just... Ugh, I love it. I love it. Yeah, for sure. And and like the best yeah. part is like two creative people like working at a high level make each other better, especially yeah. if they're honest with each other. And you know they're like saying, yeah. you know, mm, that's not gonna work. Or like you know if you can find the faults in something, it's like two people just telling each other how awesome they are does not make 
good art necessarily but two people being honest with each other yeah it's pretty nuts so hats off to workhorse for sure yeah yeah that's there's so many cool things coming for heroes hearth it's just so much fun it's a good time it's a good time to be a heroes hearth fan but also just it's a good time to be a like on twitch it's a good time to be in esports it's a good time to be a here's a storm fan it's just like such a cool time to do this right now this podcast and just it's just freaking awesome it is there you go uh monsters podcast at heroesheartha.com there you go yes that is our email and it is the place where you can send us stuff to talk about or stuff that we talked about or yeah. anything you just want to Tell us what you think about the show. The Jewels and Coffee two hours is true. We've now gone two and a half hours almost. This is a good transition, though. I mean, I I love uh, if you guys. I want you to use that um, email address as just like a a line of communication. I mean, you don't you yeah. can just send us anything. It doesn't have to be feedback. It just be like something that's going on in your life right now that you wanted to share. Like, I just feel like mm -hmm. you guys will help shape the scope of this show and so and in such a big way and if yeah. if we have that open line of communication i think it'll just we could take this to the next level so mm -hmm. thank you all of you for submitting your stories and letters for this episode and the episodes beforehand and thank you so much for the feedback i hope that we keep the line of communication open and uh we continue to make really awesome stuff together yes i am so stoked for all that's to come it's gonna be great now we have to come up with a new topic for next week i have to start thinking yeah we already <laughs> gotta start it's pretty wild I, this is like we start tomorrow oh. <laughs> wow let's try to see if we can maybe get the get the topic out on like thursday instead of friday we'll yeah see. so we'll see yeah giving people an extra day is good we get a lot at the last minute i think which is not a yeah. it's not a problem i mean that's good especially with the format of the show i mean it's just yeah, it's it's almost better like towards the end, honestly. But I, I whenever yeah. we can get it, it's just amazing. It's perfect. It's everything. Yeah. yeah. It's a little a little less prep work at the end where I'm going, oh, but luckily Mondays are not too bad for me. Coffee streams up a storm on Mondays, so I can do all the, the other stuff while he's on the streamer. Yeah, Monday right. seems to be like a big uh like Heroes Hearth streaming day. So I'm trying to do that. Yeah. Um and then the other yeah. big day is Wednesday for all of that. So there's like other stuff mm -hmm. going on. But yeah, I mean, we might, I mean, do you guys enjoy this on Monday? If Monday is not, because like when we, when we, as we progress with this and we look to move it to the Heroes Heart channel and like make it its final home, maybe we can look at better days for something like this. I don't know. It's yeah. Kind of. I mean, I can make it very flexible most of the time mm -hmm. for, for scheduling. It's just. <clears throat> we'll look at it we'll figure it out we'll figure it out figure it out we'll make it work yeah all right well i think that is a good place for us to go and uh put our feet up and sounds and good to me get let you get uh get some get, probably get some dinner my goodness <laughs> twitch flixer says hi coffee jules just came from watching last coffee hour stop by to say hello thank you so much thank so tw twitch by. flixers are actually um there are a couple that um, I met in Maryland when I used to live in Maryland. They're incredibly talented. Um, Steven is a cinematographer, production guy working in the film industry. And Gabby's a cosplayer, actress, um, dancer. Like they're just, they're perfect. And um, they, this, they, they just attended BlizzCon and it was their first BlizzCon. So, oh, that's so cool. yeah, so now they're like a part of this world. And I'm, it's so cool to see you guys in here. It's really awesome. Cool. Hey Midnight, can you give a shout out to Twitch Flixers as well? <clears throat> but yeah, you guys caught us right while we're wrapping up. Um, it's this yeah. episode. I feel like just went in a, a direction I'd never anticipated, and that made it so much more fun. Yeah, so that's... I love that. I, you kind of go in thinking it's gonna it's gonna turn in a direction, and then we just mm -hmm. gah, that just feels good. Annoy. <laughs> Annoy. Uh, yes, I'm. I'm so so happy with how this this episode turned out. I just yeah. Same. Happy Jules is happy. That's all I can say. Happy Jules is happy. 
That's all I can say. Um, <laughs> yeah, so with that, uh, I love you all so much. And um, uh, thanks for making the episode amazing. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for chatting. You guys are incredible. And, and uh, I won't be streaming tomorrow, Tuesday. I'm, it's because I was streaming today, I'm taking Tuesday off. But then we'll be back in force on Wednesday in force i'll be streaming to the hero's heart channel um during the day and then in the evening we're doing my first cosplay my first cosplay it'll be a late night stream on wednesday so i hope you stop by should be fun and uh That's so awesome jules do you have any shout outs before we sign off here just uh take a listen to the next episode of heroes news that comes out on thursday my guest is vipey and that will be uh Hopefully I have news to report this week because I didn't have any last week. And uh, <laughs> Well, you've got that you've got um, that new, that one news about the retirement. Yeah, the one thing that I didn't get into last yeah. week's episode. That yeah. was it. Michael Udall's retirement. Got the it. retirement. Uh, <laughs> and I'm excited so about that interview. I'm excited about that interview. It's going to be great. He made me tear up. Oh, Holy boy. Holy shit. He made me tear up. I did not expect to get emotional. It was so good. It's a long one. It's it's fantastic i'm editing it tomorrow so oh man yes yeah, super super stoked for that and if you like this kind of show i still do another show that will be ending in a couple of uh probably seven weeks from now called torn think tank and it is advice for gamers so if you like this kind of show and you wanted to listen to some of the other stuff that i've done that's my first original podcast it is going to end at episode 300 and we are recording episode 294 wow. 294 on thursday so that's just amazing yeah we'll yeah, be there one day so. hell yeah we will <laughs> <laughs> we, we only have 292 to go we'll get there we'll get there <laughs> um yes go check out uh heroes news um check out jules interview check out uh her um her other show that's ending soon um just immerse yourself in all things jules rpg if, if you're not already what the hell are you doing with your life um <laughs> But uh, we're all going to be there to cheer on coffee on Wednesday, even if I have to stay up with my own coffee mug. That'd be so cool. That'd be so cool. I, yeah, I, I hope everyone does stop in Wednesday night. It's going to be a really special stream. I'm very excited. Yeah. So, um, OK, you guys are awesome. Uh, that's going to do it for us. This is uh, this is Jules and Coffee signing off. We love you guys. Thanks for hanging by the fire. Bye, all. See ya. <laughs>